Okay, welcome back to theCUBE VMworld 2013. We're live in San Francisco. We are on the ground at VMworld uh, 2013, day three of three days of coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Hi everybody, Ramin Sayer is here. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of VMware's cloud management business. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks Good for having me. <laughs> so obviously, you know, VMware, big, big, big show for you guys. Um, management is a big conversation yeah, I'll say. here. Yeah. So moving up the stack has been the theme. Um, so just give, give folks a sense of what your group does at VMware and then we'll go into some specific questions. Sure, well I mean this has been a multi-year journey for us. Um, as we've helped build the customer's foundation around server virtualization, expanding that to the rest of the data center around com beyond compute to network and storage, automation and management become that much more critical to deliver on the promise and premise of the private cloud. So fortunately, we've had the opportunity over the last four, three and a half, four years to incrementally build out the portfolio of offerings that most of our customers and partners saw debuted here. What are some of the key things right now that are updates for the news for you guys that you're announcing at the show here? Sure, well, I mean, if you looked at some of the things we showed the other day, uh, it's all around how do you enable flexibility and choice, but you have the policy governance and control. So what we showed the other day with Carl on main stage was how our vCloud automation center as part of the new uh, vCloud 5.5 suite really enables, enables a separation of duties between administrators on the infrastructure side versus developers who are requesting virtual machines with operating systems and improved developer productivity. But beyond that, we also uh, announced um, some new capabilities in the core vSphere that take advantage of some of the management capabilities, like vSOM, which is vSphere with Operations Manager. Yeah, so talk about the uptake there a little bit. I mean, it's a, you know, relatively new. Your executives talk about it on their, on their earnings call. There's always a lot of discussion about going beyond core you know, vSphere, so talk about the customer reaction and, and the uptake a bit. Sure, um, so it's the fastest growing product line in the company right now. Um, awesome. And <laughs> fortunately that's uh, primarily because customers need to be able to automate more and more of not just the inside bowels of what's going on in vSphere, but also all the peripherals with respect to network and storage. And so the uptake for us has been on two fronts. One has been adoption of the vCloud suite holistically mm -hmm. and customers looking to not only build a homogenous based private cloud, but a heterogeneous based hybrid cloud. So as we look at the vCloud suite, the starting point for a lot of customers is, let me get granular control of the vSphere based environment, and then I want to be able to bridge out, we call it, expand out to the hybrid, whether it be public or even vCloud hybrid services that we announced. Okay, so um, when you say holistically, you're talking about the, the whole enchilada of the suite to, to, yeah. to get all the capabilities, right? Exactly. So, so and in addition, I mean, you guys have incredible renewal rates. I mean, your, your customers are very loyal. Customers oftentimes are do, doing you know, multi-year renewal engagements, right? So you're, can you talk about that a little bit? You're seeing more and, and more of that from sort of bespoke little buying patterns to much more of holistic and, and broader, uh, whether it's ELAs or, or more pieces of the pie. You got rising average uh, ASPs. Yeah. Uh, talk about that a little bit in terms of customer adoption. Sure, I'll talk more specifically around the management business yeah. and then more broadly right. around VMware. Um, from a management point of view, our attach rate to the vSphere install base has tr dramatically grown over mm. the last year and a half. And the first half of this year, particularly, we've seen a substantial growth as we uh, announced in a lot of our earnings calls. And what's driving that at the end of the day? Well, one is more customers are continuing to move from the phase one to two and even three of the uh, kind of maturity life cycle. And so that means they're moving past the 40% adoption. So, great example of that is VC Ops, that's really helping manage a vSphere de deployment. So our attach rate and penetration rates around that are growing. And in particular, you're seeing not only the VMware channel, VMware direct reps, but also the channel pick that up. So earlier this year, we announced solution rewards for our channel partners, which they get 30 points rebates. We've done a lot of to certify and train them. So both our direct selling and our partners are actually going and helping customers evolve their maturity to go beyond 40% to 60% and ultimately get to the private cloud, the cloud suite. Yeah, a few years ago, John and I were talking and we, 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 called, uh, we called management a jump ball. Right? You had a lot of traditional players and sort of a lot of you know, entrenched you know, management 
uh, uh, suites, offerings, solutions, whatever you want to call them. Um, you guys have begun to really change that market. Can you talk about sort of in that context where you are today and what your vision is going forward as a, as a player in that marketplace? Yeah, I mean, if you look at IDC, for example, and they uh, just put out a report that says VMware is the fastest growing uh, management vendor in the space. Um, and you know, part of that is due to the fact that we have such a big loyal install base and they want to do more with respect to what they're doing already with the server virtualization products, right? And so as they expand out to integrate networking and storage, they need manageability, they need a consistent way, but they need a new way, not a traditional framework play that takes a long time to get into this dynamic environment, right? So, um, one of the great things is the feedback of the, of the customers, whether it be VMUGs or part of the design process, we re intently listen to a lot of our customers and partners, and we give them access to a lot of our products and betas, and we innovate with them, so it's not just VMware building these for them. I mean, I got to ask you, obviously, the, the, the landscape question, and you have a lot of history in the enterprise software business, I mean, probably different companies as well. Uh, VMware's got a great brand. We talked to Sanjay Poonan earlier, who came from SAP, he was excited about the opportunity. <laughs> we didn't really talk much about what was, it was like before <laughs> he got there, but he's got his running shoes on. But you've been in around the block on enterprise software management. Yeah. We all know the history of going HP Open View, systems management, EMC. What's changed now? What is the big thing that you look at from product management to go to market that is a critical difference from the old way to the new way? Still a lot of legacy, you got to bridge the legacy. What's the new open markets that, that you see and, and the technology that's underneath? Right. Great question, actually. Um, I think something from a technology perspective what's changed is that um, the dynamic environment simply cannot be managed by those older frameworks, right? And I worked on a lot of them, I built a lot of them, and in this new world, the cloud era, you need different types of techniques around machine learning and analytics to understand what's going on deep within the bowels of all the abstraction layers that we're creating, right? So that starts to separate the pack right there, right? Um, but I think what else is going on is there's a very aggressive and progressive move towards open source, right? Whether that be an open stack, whether it be other open source um, technologies, you know, you, we see quite a bit around Puppet or Chef or Salt, you know, in the development community as well, right? So what's the biggest change there is open source is enabling developers to be a lot more product, productive, but also is also enabling them to be more demanding as to what they expect from infrastructure. So therefore, the t traditional tools and the way of delivery models of infrastructure as a service fundamentally needs to be turned upside down, right? And so <laughs> no longer does IT have that monopoly control when developers are going outside. I've always asked myself that question. I remember the, when, when monitoring started hitting the scene in the late 80s with client server, it's oh, we had all these networks now, you know, from one coax string to you know, hubs and then you got all kinds of great stuff. It's always the infrastructure that drives management. Now we have management paradigms in an, in an ever-changing architecture of the operating systems yeah. or the networks. Yeah. So now you've got massive architectural changes. People are trying to shoehorn old management techniques into a moving train on the architecture side. So this is not even a done deal. How can you manage something that's not known? So that's kind of like uh, the mindset that we're, we're looking at. So one, do you agree with that? And then what's your, uh, what's your commentary around that? What is, what do you do? I mean, how do you manage that dilemma? Because you got clients looking for systems management and monitoring. Yeah. yeah, so first of all, I do agree with that. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm here at VMware. I got the opportunity several years ago to come in and ground up, build this technology and business out. Um, and if I didn't believe that, I probably wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> um, but more specifically, I think uh, the challenge for customers is that if they try to go about the private cloud or hybrid cloud from a brownfield perspective, meaning that they're trying to leverage their old and new, it's very difficult and cumbersome because people and process is just as important as technology. And where we've seen the customers be most successful is where they actually instantiate a new greenfield private cloud and start to look at new paradigms of networking and storage and management to deliver upon the requirements of development and lines of business. And usually those customers are a lot more successful than the brownfield environment, so they try to leverage their existing tools and frameworks and processes. You have an example you can share with folks that, that have done that, the, or, you know, the name names, but like, just describe the environment of the greenfield. Sure, where I mean. They had challenges and kind of stuck in the middle on one hand, you've been brownfield, I call it stuck in the middle, half pregnant, whatever you want to call it, to, okay, clean sheet of paper. Yeah, so it's one big bank, um, in the EMEA and Central Park, you know, they, they tried for nine months to, in, in essence, this is exactly similar to a service provider there, 
take the network team, the storage team, the compute team, bring them together and create a virtual shared services group, right? It was like the UN, right? <laughs> and you had to go sell and solicit everyone. For nine months they made no progress. And the reason they made no progress was one group in Silo didn't understand the challenges of the other and there was no single person that was the authority to break decisions. So they ended up parking that and they ended up going with a converge stack and they rolled that in and they brought in a new team. They picked the best and brightest from the compute team, the network team, the storage team, that became the cloud organization, right? And that was a greenfield cloud in a three and a half month time, they were able to consider. So silo busters basically, basically get guys who are, don't even care about the politics of the silos and saying go, yeah. go, go eat class as we, we say, right? <laughs> <laughs> the silo busting is very critical. As we're busting down the technology silos, we're also very cognizant of the fact that process and organizational barriers are often the issues that customers need to address so, too. I want to come back to something you said earlier about analytics. Um, a lot of people believe that the sort of traditional policy-based management is dead, that it's too complicated, you need machines to actually make decisions. Humans can't make them, them fast enough. So that's kind of, sort of, it sounds like bromide, but still, <laughs> there's some, makes some sense. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that and, and what are you guys doing in that regard? Um, so we uh, apply to that principle quite a bit. Uh, if you look at our VC Ops portfolio products and our Log Insight, it's all about machine learning, behavior analysis technology that starts to understand normal and abnormal behavior of workloads, right? And the reason is because in the traditional infrastructure and data center, a user had to define what they thought a high and low threshold amount would be. But this inf infrastructure is so dynamic and applications are so dynamic, it's impossible for a user to know the variability and what a workload or infrastructure should act like. So when you have characterization of an application or workload that learns a behavior through different cycles, that can be very informative as to where you provision, deprovision, as well as where operationally you need insight to what's going on in the underlying infrastructure. So I have a heavy investment in machine learning, PhD, analytics folks, constantly building analytics and algorithms into the VC Ops product and also other parts of our ITBM portfolio to help with better improved decision making, whether that's done man by a human for providing that insight or automatically, as we say, yep. by the machines and the system itself. Now is that a predominantly organic uh, investment or is there some, some acquisitions as well involved in that both. capability? It's both. So uh, we acquired one technology company, it's called Integrian several Integrian, years ago, yeah, yeah. right? Um, okay. And we've built upon that. We have a lot of machine learning PhDs. Uh, we acquired a set of folks last year um, with our acquisition of our Log Insight product. Uh, it was a company that we brought in. Um, but we also added more than quadrupled those teams over the last couple of years. Awesome. Yeah, we love machine learning. I mean, Dave and I are uh, data junkies. We have our own little uh, analytics system, and unsupervised machine learning. Yeah. And it's interesting, as you get more data, it gets smarter, right? So, you know, you need the data, right? You can't manage the data. It's Jeff Jonas' yeah. puzzle, right, John? Yeah. 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 Jeff Jonas, guy from IBM, real brilliant data scientist, chief scientist, and uh, yeah. says, you know, yeah piece of the puzzle here or there, you can't really see it, but as the puzzle starts to get bigger and put together, you can So what's interesting is how you make use of the data, though, because yeah, more absolutely. data is not necessarily great, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and now, how do you act on it, right? Yeah, how do you act on it? And as you heard during the various uh, presentations, the amount of telemetry that's going in, and even non -out, outside of IT, is just enormous, yeah. right? But inside IT, from the hardware platforms all the way up, you're getting inundated with more and more metrics. Right, yeah. events. The visualization challenge alone is, is mind boggling. So how do you provide the right insight to the specific metrics or KPIs you know, at that point in time is a, is a difficult balance for us. And yeah. what sort of UIs do you provide that provide that visibility? Yeah. We spent yeah. several years and we're still fine tuning it. Right. Yeah, I mean, expectation maximization like protocols to go in there and figure out, hey, we've seen this pattern before. Yeah. So we're actually starting to use some social principles now. So because machine learning, you know, is it's good to understand what's good and normal and not normal, but then the user needs to start to vote whether they kind of like it or dislike it, mm -hmm. right? Now which users? The end users of the system, yeah, so of the yeah. tool, yeah, right? So, so how, so for example, one of the things we're doing on release right now is we're asking the user to rate something. Was this helpful or not? 
So then we can start to better fine tune the algorithms for that particular use case and scenario that they're managing. Right? Right? Crowds That's exactly. techniques to feed the... Well, using the human the intelligence. It's, a, it's really a balance between humans and machines. You're spot saying. on, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, and that's and new data too, that's new data. Yeah, so we've actually expanded from the structured data that we had talked about before log in with VCOps to now unstructured data as we saw during the main stage with log insight. So now we can, the beautiful thing is we bring them both together and so with time series structured data, with unstructured log data, now we can provide powerful insight to what's going on. Where does dynamic ops fit into all of this? It's a very critical control point for us and for customers. Um, and where does that sit on the stack? Above or beyond, I mean, where does that piece sit on the stack? So logically it sits on top of the uh, VC, VCD stack for a, within a homogenous vSphere environment, but also sits on top of any converged stack, sits on top of any roll your own kind of infrastructure, and it bridges the uh, release automation process from applications upstream with a component called AppDirector, and downstream to provision on a single virtual machine or a set of virtual machines or a virtual data center. Yeah, I mean, we like Leslie, we've been him in last year in theCUBE, he's one smart guy, so that yeah. was a nice acquisition too. Um, so the final question for you, we're going to break on the segment is, I want to just, just tell the folks, what's your goals for the year? Obviously, you're in a hot area, um, dynamic networks are changing the game on management, you guys get that, it's a clear vision, no debate there, check the box, now execute, <laughs> get the hiring the PhDs, that's smart, getting the big data, use big data for you, yep. crowdsourcing, little new gesture-based data coming in to complement some of the machine learning. Um, on the business side, what, what do you, what's your to-do list for the next, uh, next year or so, half, half a year or so? So um, obviously we have very uh, ambitious and aggressive vision around Software Defined Data Center, and we've debuted some of the announcements here. We logically have another event coming up in Barcelona. We'll be making some more announcements there. So for us, my engineering organization, we're heads down, we're pumping out products, right? We have a bunch coming out in the second half and a lot coming out in the first half. So one is just keep innovating at the pace that we're innovating, right? The second is make it simple, right? Management and automation needs to be much simpler in this new world. And so we're rapidly innovating, prototyping new stuff. Some of that comes to market, some of that doesn't. And so we're looking at our continued integration development with our partners and our customers to help influence that. I mean, I, gotta, I do ask have one more question just popped in my head as you were saying that, um, a personal question. You know, you've been in, you grew up in Silicon Valley. Yeah. You know innovation, you've seen it right in front of your eyes from the apple orchards to now the crowded valley that it now is. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about there. Exactly. People who grew up here know I'm from the East Coast, so I wasn't there then. It was apricot and for I me. I should have bought a house when I soon <laughs> I moved here. That was my <laughs> biggest mistake in five houses. Um, <laughs> But in all seriousness, I mean, you had a great run in your career. You, you were at Netscape, you've been at the, the startups, you've been at HP, now VMware. Talk about the culture of VMware. Uh, we, we were talking this morning with Pat and uh, with the team and Sanjay, it's a technical culture. It is. And they say the word cult, I mean, I like that word, but that's kind of makes, I don't really like that word too much, but it's, it's techniques, innovation is key. And, and what are some of the some things you can share about the culture? You know, um, on a personal note, I must say that uh, in your career you only have a few opportunities like this that I have here at VMware where you get a ride like this, right? And if you surf, you surf, you understand when you get those, right? Um, and this is just an unbelievable opportunity culture for me to be in, and a lot of the folks are here at VMware. Um, with Pat coming on board, he wholeheartedly believes in this SDC vision. Yeah, he's doubled down on the management business for me in particular and the group, so we're accelerating a lot of the, the innovation IP creation. But at the end of the day, you, you got to live and breathe and die by the technology. Yeah. And if you're not passionate about it, you don't thrive here. Passionate, we, we love, big fans of VMware, obviously, in Palo Alto, a great company, and great ride. You know, the dense is up, and uh, you know, the one year since Pat's been there, changed and Pivotal's out doing their thing. Yeah. Nice separation, and that's still the stack that Moritz still showed in 2010. It's still just two companies now attacking it in an ecosystem that's doing great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. We'll be right back, stay with us. Day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>